Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter, verse number 5, 5 through 15. We got 10 verses. And if you have your Bible and you can stand, please stand. Amen. Yeah, they say amen. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah, Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord before the new court. Read. this land before thy people Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever if when evil cometh upon us as the sword judgment or pestilence or famine we stand before this house and in thy presence for thy name is in this house and cry unto thee in our afflictions then thou wilt hear and help. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Verse 15 together, and he said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Again, Father, I thank you. And I ask you, Lord, would you help us by your great grace to impart this word to these your people? Somebody needs encouragement. Would you encourage them? Help them to understand. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Clap your hands as you're being seated. Get to all of our visitors and friends who are watching, those who are in the sanctuary, I greet you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I am so glad that you have decided to come to be with us in the name of the Lord. Verse 15, he says, Hearken ye all Judah, ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And I want to talk to you just a little bit from the subject, let God do it. Look at somebody and tell them, let God do it. Look at somebody else and tell them, let God do it. Yeah, it's important for us. It's easy to want to be in control. Amen. The human struggle is that when we think we can do something about it, we will easily jump into the melee. Great challenge of our times it's really a lack of temperance. We have never seen a time in the church where so many people lack temperance. Let me just say it in simple terms, self-control. Amen. I get nervous when I get in the car with saints now. Because when they get in, they don't pray. Praise the Lord. Before they, you know, that used to be standard. When you got in your car, they prayed. And then, 
while they're going down the road, they're nearly cussing out every person, amen, who is beside them in, in the roadway. It would seem as if, amen, that we have reached a time where now uh, everyone wants to take things into their own hands. Amen. I can handle this. <laughs> I can take care of this. <laughs> really, you don't want me to do something about it. And there seems to be this spirit that has rose, um, rose up in us, amen, that no longer believes, amen, in the timing of God. Somebody say the timing of God. Yeah, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Amen. And, and of course, we say that, <laughs> but at the same time, we're constantly looking at our clocks and our watches saying, where is God? Amen. I, I, I thought if God was for me and he's more than the whole world that's against me, then he would come by when I expected him to come by. Amen. It didn't seem fair. It seems like other people are ahead of me and they're able to do things, amen, that I only wish I could do. Praise the Lord. But where, where is God? We have never seen a time where people are so impatient. Praise the Lord. Their expectation is, amen, uh, that God would do things in their timing. Amen. And in scriptures that tell us they that wait upon the Lord, uh, well, we, we really don't want to believe those things anymore. We don't feel like we have to, amen, you know, wait for God to come through. We can just name it and claim it and believe it and see it and decree it and declare. Amen. And since God can't lie, I can take his word and force him to do something at my time. Praise the Lord. I, it reminds me of some years ago, I was looking at a house and went down to the house about midnight. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. And I laid hands on the house and prayed over the house. Amen. And, and went to the realtor and didn't get the house. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. And I went to the Lord afterwards and I said, Lord, I, I, I claimed that house. Praise the Lord. I would believe in you for that house. Amen. And, and the Lord spoke to me just as plain and said, and then what did I do? <laughs> Amen. You can't tell me what to give you. Praise the Lord. Amen. No, no, not if you come into me. You can't tell me what to give you. And he showed me just as plain. He said, you could have been arrested for trespassing. <laughs> Doing your Jericho march around the property. <laughs> and some of us are trespassing in places that we ought not be. Amen. Because we're acting as if God is on our time clock. Uh-huh. As if he's obligated to do what we want when we want him to do it even though most times we won't do what he wants when he wants us to do it. Uh-huh, and so, amen, we must learn the process, praise the Lord, as we go through life of how, amen, to wait on the Lord. Amen, learn how to trust him in spite of what we feel. Amen, a battle, a battle is an occurrence of combat and warfare between opposing units amen and and listen a battle in a war is not the same thing praise the lord a war usually consists of multiple battles praise the lord and, and many times for us we are struggling with the idea because we want it now we yes. want it now we we see every battle as the ultimate war but all battles amen fit or are contained amen within amen the war somebody say it's not over yet 
even if you get through this trial that you're in right now, it's not over yet because you're not perfect yet. And if you don't believe it, all you need to do is ask somebody who don't like you. They're going to tell you about your real self. Praise the Lord. Amen. I know. I know you. When you look in the mirror, you look for the, the things that you love. Oh, you have beautiful lips. Oh, oh, your ears are just nice and small and perky. Praise the Lord. You won't even pay attention to that cross eye you got. Praise the Lord. Amen. Or that mustache you got, <laughs> lady. Praise the Lord. Uh-uh. You only pay attention to the things, amen, that you consider to be flattering. Amen. And so uh, many times when we are in struggles, we, we have issues because our expectation is that it should be over immediately. Amen. And so when we start talking, amen, about a battle as opposed to a war, amen, uh, the battles are usually short spurts, amen. They're not long term, amen, like the war. Amen. Battles are typically held during the day. Amen. In favorable circumstances. It's just a scrimmage. Amen. That you should be able to be able to get through the circumstances. And you know what that makes me think of? That God will not allow you to be tempted above that which ye are able. Uh-huh. Yes. He won't allow a battle in your life that you can't handle. Maybe you don't want to handle the problem. Maybe you don't want to go through the circumstances. Amen. But tell somebody if you're in it, you can handle it. Yes, yes, I know, I know. You know, it's like when you have a personal trainer, the personal trainer, when they first, when you first get with a personal trainer, they do what is called an assessment. And, and the assessment is to determine your level of fitness. And, and when they design your program, of course, they will make sure that they gradually increase the pressure of the program because they know know if they gave you the ultimate program you would not be able to complete it and so what they do is they gradually add a little bit more on a couple of more push-ups and a couple of more crunches praise the Lord why because they're trying to build strength and not to destroy you and I and can I tell you if a personal trainer would go through that process how much more would God make sure that every battle that you are engaged in you are able to win somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, it may seem like a disadvantage. It may seem like you can't overcome. But the truth is, amen, when Satan came to God in the book of Job, God already knew what Job was going to do. Amen. And he, and of course, when Satan went back and afflicted all of those different things upon Job, amen, when he came back, amen, he had the answer that God already knew he was going to have because he knew there was something in Job that could handle the pressure of life. And sometimes when you look at yourself and what you're going through, you ask the question, why? The truth is, it's because you can handle it. Somebody say, Lord, help me to believe it. Yes, yes, we've got to believe I can handle it. This, this is a faith walk, and without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that come to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And that means then that in the process of my walk, in the process of following after God, I've got to constantly pray and seek him. Amen. I, I don't just pray one time, but I keep on praying as I go through the process of my test. As long as you are convinced that you can stop praying while you're in it, can I tell you, you're going to fail. You're going to run out of faith. You're going to run out of gas along the way. But keep on seeking God even as you go through the process. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Yes, yes, battles are tough things that happen. Amen. They come out of nowhere. It would seem as if we're not prepared for them. But can I tell you, uh, God begins to teach us some principles in Romans the 8th chapter, verse number 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, who are the called according to his purpose. Listen, it may not feel good. It may not look good. You may not want to deal with it, but eventually it's going to work out. Amen. And you're going to come out like pure gold. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, the psalmist says these words in 31 and 1. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Lord, I, I want to trust you. And I don't want to be ashamed of uh, trusting you. And I know you are my deliverer. I know you're going to come by. I don't know when you're going to come by. I don't know how you're going to come by. I don't know when you're going to change the circumstances. Mm, but God, I can trust you. I can relax in you. I can recline upon you. I can trust that you're going to keep your word and that you're not a man that you should lie. Men lie. Amen. But God doesn't lie. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Let's give him a praise right there. Oh my God. I can trust him. Lord have mercy. When I said that something sparked in my spirit. I can trust him. I don't understand it. I'm thinking about last night Sister Nesta was going through last night. My God, and for the last few days she's been having a rough go, and I'm laying there waiting, trying to help, wait for her to go to sleep, and about 4 o'clock in the morning, this morning she falls asleep, and I look over and make sure she's doing fine, and I said, Lord, I can trust you. I don't understand. Amen. This process, praise the Lord, I don't understand how this is working out, but I know it's going to work out for good. I don't know, amen, all the ins and outs of all the circumstances that we go through, Lord, but I know in the midst of this, amen, I can give you praise, Lord, have mercy. I can give you glory, and it is in these times that I find out if I will bless the Lord at all times. Shout, Lord! Yes, yes, yes. Everybody claims I bless him when things are good and when they're bad and when they're happy and when they're sad. But the truth is, many times the devil steals your praise as soon as God gets out the way and lets the trial come through. When a battle shows up, amen, when situations don't go the way you expect them to go, I got to suggest to you, amen, let God do it. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes, it may not feel good, may not look good, amen, may not understand all the ins and outs of everything that you're facing, but let God do it, amen, amen, my mind is about to drive me crazy, but let God do it, shout glory, let God do it. Yes, yes, yes. And so, amen, we begin to understand that it is important to believe, amen, in the Lord. Amen. It's important to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Lord, have mercy. And the Bible begins to teach me these words in 2 Peter 2 and 9. The Lord know how. Uh, my God to deliver the godly out of temptation. Tell somebody God knows how to get you out of your thing. Yes, yes, he knows how to get you out of your temptation. Yes, yes, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. And not only does God know how to get you out, God needs, knows how to take care of those wrongdoers that are doing you wrong. Lord, have mercy. And sometimes it seems like they're just skating on the bed of flowery, bed of ease. It seems like they're laughing in your face. But can I tell you, God's going to get the last laugh. Lord have mercy. God's going to get glory out your story. My, my, my. We got 
got to understand that God knows what he is doing. Lord, have mercy. And the Bible said, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. When you fall into stuff, learn how to get happy. Tell somebody, are you happy? Lord, have mercy. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith is working on you. Tell somebody, God is working on you. And you know how it is when God starts working on you. He knows how to take the junk out of us. Some of us is going to take a whole lot of heat. A whole lot. You know how it is. Can I tell y'all? I like oxtails. Lord have mercy. But you know what you got to do with oxtails? You got to put them under extreme pressure to get them tender. Lord have mercy. I like ham hocks. Lord have mercy. But in order to get a good ham hock right, you got to put them under extreme pressure and I like loving saints and can I tell you but the only way you gonna get a loving saint is you got to put them under extreme pressure somebody said Lord cook me until I'm tender cook me until I love you cook me until I love your people Lord have mercy <laughs> he said the trying of your faith work your patience and let and let somebody tell somebody let Lord have mercy patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and complete and entire wanting nothing the only way it's going to happen is you got to let God have his way in your life somebody shout Lord and so then we must understand that battles are here to make us what we ought to be. They're not here to destroy us, that they're here to make us what we ought to be. Mm -hmm. And by, by these battles, God is able to put in and take out stuff. And you're wondering, why am I in this? I don't understand it. I'm reminded one of the saints said, I changed a whole lot. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I'm glad you did. But praise the Lord. But there's a long way to go. Praise the Lord. Mm, yes, yes, you registered for college. You showed up for the first class. Amen. You studied hard, but you got a long way to go to the degree. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes, God is going to be working on us for the rest of our lives. Tell somebody there's a long way to go. Yes, there's a, a long long way to go and God knows praise the Lord amen some of the things that we go through he can't personally do it to us mm, can I tell y'all when I was raising my son you know I had gone up when I was growing up I went through a lot of physical abuse of the picket and man because of that it made it hard for me to correct my son when he was a little boy <laughs> so sometimes I would tell him just wait just wait I can't do nothing right now because I don't want to abuse you I just wait but then I would say to his mama but you can do it right now Lord have mercy and sometimes God can't do what he need to do to you so he got to hire somebody out to do it to you <laughs> Lord have mercy Lord have y'all better hear me God is going to use whoever he needs to use to get you in order <laughs> God's going to work on you <laughs> in spite of you <laughs> cry as much as you want to cry <laughs> moan as much as you're going to want to moan <laughs> but God is still going to work on you <laughs> Lord have mercy <laughs> and so then we understand here that God amen is working on his people <laughs> can you hear me God is working on you <laughs> God's working on me and in this text here <laughs> we find out the ones who are working are the children of Moab <laughs> the children of Ammon and them Lord have mercy the Ammonites <laughs> and they come to battle against Jehoshaphat <laughs> and the 
children of Israel. And when you know trouble is coming, that's the time to pray. <laughs> Don't wait until the trouble gets here. <laughs> but when you see the cloud, Lord have mercy. <laughs> when you see the pressure coming, when you see the hurt coming, then start praying. <laughs> and Jehoshaphat said, we got problems. <laughs> And the Bible says, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. And he said, come on, y'all, let's fast. If we're going to make it, we got to get past this flesh. Because this flesh don't want to fast. This flesh don't want to pray. This flesh don't want to go through it. And the Bible says, he gathered them together to ask for help of the Lord. Can I tell y'all, when you pray, you better get real transparent and say, Lord, I'm about to fall. Lord, I'm about to backslide. Lord, I'm about to cut somebody out. Lord, I feel my flesh. When you pray, don't be saying, you know, Lord. Tell him just how you feel. Lord have mercy. There are times when I feel like giving up. Times when I'm ready to walk away from y'all. Some of y'all rascals make a good pastor want to leave you. And my God, when I get to God, I say, Lord, you see that rascal. You understand what Brother Bosco is doing. You see Sister Chicken Wing. Y'all know who she is. Y'all know who he is. I ain't got to say that name over the internet. And the Bible said they gathered together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation in the house of the Lord before the new court. And he said, I got to tell God about what's going on. And he said, Lord, you're the God of our fathers. There ain't nobody like you. And as long as you understand, only God can do it. I tried myself, but only God can fix my problems. You're the only one. You're the only, only one. You rule over the kingdoms of this world. Not just the saints, but the heathen too. And in thine hand, y'all better hit, y'all better come on here. Y'all better understand. God's got power to fix every circumstance. God has got the ability to turn your circumstances around. Shout hallelujah. The Bible says, he said, Lord, we might as well go. You boom over the heathen. You got power in your hand. No one, nothing can withstand me. Do you hear? What this devil is saying? Do you hear what my circumstances, my sickness, my money is saying? Lord, I'm crying to you. Don't you see them? You're able to drive out the inhabitants before thy people. You're able to change my situation. You're able to replenish, revive, renew. Shout glory. Shout glory again. He said, Behold, 
the children of Ammon. Behold the children of Moab at Mount Seir. You got to name your situation. Name your problem. Lord, you see this pain. You see my pocket. You see my need. I ain't going to play with it. And the Bible says, you told us if evil come upon us, in my God the sword, judgment, pestilence, famine, we came before you in this house because your name your name is in this house lay your hands on your head and say your name is in this house my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost y'all better hear me Lord, oh my God, he said, behold, I say, how they reward us. You made them good. You didn't touch them. But Lord, they're trying to take our stuff. Lord, they're trying to beat us, beat us, beat us down. But God, when are you going to judge him? We ain't got no might. We can't change the circumstances. Lord, have mercy. Our eyes. Hi, 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 hi. Our eyes on you, Lord. Tell me what to do. Lord have mercy. Judah stood before the Lord with the little ones, the wives, the children. Jehaziel jumped up and started prophesying. The spirit of the Lord came upon him and he said, hearken. All Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, just said the Lord, be not afraid, nor dismayed, by the reason of this great multitude. Do you know why? Because the battle is not yours. Tell somebody, stop trying to figure it out and let God work it out. Because the battle is not yours. Pray, praise, worship, pray, praise, worship. Tell somebody, let God do it. Let God do it. Let God. Now, when God does something like that, there's going to be a challenge to believe. Because some of us are fighters. Some of us, as soon as somebody look at us, we... As soon as they look our way, we... What, 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 what? The fight ain't even started. They haven't said nothing. You, you already got your fist balled up. Amen. You ready to throw? It's before they go up. Bye! So God 
First thing you got to do, you got to unball your fists. Amen. Tell somebody, unball your fists. Amen. Yeah, you got to unball your fists. Amen. And then he got to put you in the danger zone. Amen. Oh, that's it now. It's easy to keep your fists unballed when you're not in the danger zone. Then he said, now listen, you don't have to worry about this battle. It's not yours. So most of us think that if it's not mine, then I can hide. Oh, no. You still going to the battle. You just not going to be fighting at the battle. That's all. Oh, you still going. You just not going to be fighting. And then he said, I need all the people that really believe me. I need them to get in the front of the battle. Praise the Lord. Those just happen to be the praisers. See, because when you know and you believe God, you don't mind giving them a praise. Hey! You don't mind giving them glory. You don't mind giving them honor. So all of them came to the front of the line. I wish I had somebody was brave enough to come to the front of the line. Woo. Thank you, Brother Kevin. Somebody's brave enough in the heat of your battle to come to the front of the line. Because I know I can't fix it. I know I can't turn it around. But if I can just get to the front of the line, Hey, Lord, have mercy. If I can just get in the place, I want to get close as I can to the glory of God. I want to get as close as I can to where the action is. And then I'm going to let God do it. somebody the Bible says when they got there they started praising they started worshiping they started giving God glory and while they was doing it while they was doing it God was working it out while they was doing it While they was doing it, God was confusing their enemies. But I 
give you praise. Come on here. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Go ahead! 